Hey guys, welcome back to Deadman1010 and welcome back to Lego Harry Potter years 5 to 7. And on today's episode, well, on the last episode, I showed you the how to get to the customizer. And now on today's episode, I'll be doing my first showcase out of 50 showcases that I plan on doing for this game. In terms of for the characters. And we are going to be starting off with none other than the boy who lived... Harry James Potter. And here he is. He looks cool. And uh, there is a lot more versions of Harry Potter. And uh, in terms of his uh, abilities, so that's his jump. He has the Reducto spell. As you saw there. He has this spell. In terms of his... Uh, in terms of his green spell, it is basically his invisible, uh, his invisibility cloak. So there he is, with that on, so there's that. And obviously, he gets that as a gift from, uh, James Potter, I believe. Because I think that used to be his. But obviously, Ran- but obviously, I nearly said Randy. But obviously Harry inheritance that from him basically when James and Lily die at the hands of Voldemort. And then we have the uh, Defendo spell. The purple spell is also called Wingardium Leviosa. And then we have Luminous Solum. So, he has that going for him, which is the light up spell. So that's what that is. And then we have the Aquamenti spell, or something, something like that. So, he can shoot out water there. And then we have Forkerus, which is what Harry learns when he goes into a lesson involving Professor Snape. In uh, the Order of the Phoenix movie. So that's what happens there. So Hermione and Ron don't end up learning in the learning this spell as you can see. But Harry does. Now we have Expecto Patronum, which scares off all the Dementors. Which Harry is afraid of. So that's all the abilities and spells that you know he can he can do. And then we have his jumping. But, there is more. There is most certainly more. There is... There is the normal Harry Potter. Which is just in his Gryffindor robes and, you know, stuff of that nature. He's the same and he's got all the same spells and all that jazz. So, there you go. And furthermore, we have all of these Harry Potters. So we start off with Harry in a brown jacket. We have Harry in a brown jacket. There you go. He looks nice and grown up and cool. I definitely quite like this version of Harry. Then we have... Then we have the uh, Godric's Hollow Harry. So there is him. So he looks cool. Of course he's the same and he's got all the same spells and all this other stuff. And then we have the uh, naked version of Harry when uh, Ron and Harry go into the uh, lake to find a Horcrux. Or at least that's what I call it, is the naked version of Harry because he is legit naked. Or naked. So he has all the same spells and all that other stuff. And then we have Pajama Harry. So 
so there's that. Looks nice, I imagine that he looks quite cosy in that. But, uh, anywho, he's got his, you know, jumping and same abilities and such, it's just obviously him in, uh, pyjamas. There's so many variants of Harry, it's unbelievable. Now we have the Christmas version. He can also uh, talk to snakes as well, guys, which he finds that out in the Chamber of Secrets, the second movie. And that's the same ability as Voldemort, and then Ron gets to do it in later movies, which therefore he gets that ability in this game. Not Lego Harry Potter is 1 to 4, unlike Harry, who does. So here we go. So we have the Christmas version of Harry. So here he is. He looks cool. He's got the red tie, as you can see uh, inside there. Pretty, uh, pretty noticeable and pretty fitting. He has his jumping and, you know, all the same uh, mumbo jumbo. Come on. Come on. Let me change character. There we go. And then, and then we have, what else do we have? Winter Harry and then the disguised version of Harry. Okay, we got, we got a few more Harrys still. So we have the winter version, which like I said, has all the same stuff like all the other ones, except this is him in his winter clothing. So that's good. That is actually a pretty cool design. Looks nice and accurate to when he obviously wore it. Then we have the Ministry of Magic carry, where he's disguised as Albert uh, Rundgren. So here he is. He has a different haircut and everything. And he has a different stand. So he kind of looks like a more older Harry Potter, not actually younger, like he's, you know, supposed to be in the series. So, there he is. And he has a, he has a different jumping as well, but all the other abilities are the same, obviously. But, it's just his running, and his jumping, and his idle animations, and his hair, and his clothing that are the difference maker, or difference uh, maker. So it's pretty cool Harry, I'm not gonna lie. Or gonna lie. Now we have the Yule Ball Harry from the Goblet of Fire movie. So this looks pretty cool. As you can see, Harry's in obviously a tux, which you definitely can't go wrong with. So that looks nice. Jumping is still the same, hairpiece is still the same, everything is still the same apart from what he's wearing, which is his Yule Ball tux robes, basically. Or basically. So, uh, yeah, they are all the same. As in, he has the same abilities, but obviously it's different. And then back to the brown jacket version we go. In terms of, uh, and the first attire that we were in was his Goblet of Fire Part 2 attire, when he's facing off against Voldemort in the final duel, basically, which you get to relive in the final level of the game, which I will show you. There you go, there's that. So, uh, yeah, so that's also what we were playing as beforehand. But, information about Harry, of course, he's the boy who lived lived. Obviously he had a traumatic kind of childhood where at the age of one his parents, his mom and dad were basically murdered by Voldemort and he somehow su survived but he did left leave a scar on Harry, Voldemort did, and naturally that plays on him the entire series pretty much. And then by the time he gets to 11 years old, he's been with his, his, uh, 
his Petunia's and Vernon Dursley's house, which is, uh, which is, which I think is his, like, aunt or uncle or granddad or, I, I don't, I can't think what family relatives they actually are. And then he's got his cousin Dudley Dursley. So there you go. So he ends up sleeping under the stairs, but when he's at the age of 11 or 12, he ends up uh, getting an invitation to go to Hogwarts. And therefore it starts the whole Harry Potter series. So therefore, he goes to Hogwarts and then it's like, and then like, the Dudleys are like, nah, 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 magic ain't real, you ain't going to that, to that place. And then in the end, he actually did go, thanks to Hagrid coming and letting him go, and then them two going off to Diagon Alley to get the bits and pieces that he needed for Hogwarts, like a wand and whatnot. So, that's what happened. And he was basically using his parents' money for that. So he kind of inherited that as well as James's uh, invisibility cloak. And then after that, he meets Ron and Hermione, which later he would become best friends with, with for the rest of the series. And then in the Chamber of Secrets, he's having the task of saving Ginny, who ends up being his love interest in the end. And therefore them to get together and have kids and all that stuff. So that's what happens in the Chamber of Secrets. In the uh, in the Goblet of Fire, he's having to save his godfather Sirius Black from being framed and being put in Azkaban for something that he didn't do. And he was framed by the one and only uh, Peter Pettigrew, aka Wormtail, who basically is a loyal member of Lord Voldemort and therefore he was he was basically the uh, seeker, peace seeker, or whatever his name it was, for Lily and James Potter, and therefore he gives them up, and therefore Voldemort can murder them. Thanks to obviously the process, thanks to obviously the prophecy that gets told beforehand, and it was either going to be Harry or Neville Longbottom's parents that got got murdered but they still got murdered anyway by Bellatrix instead as strange that is Bellatrix was strange so she did that instead but yeah so Wormtail aka Peter Pettigrew basically gives them up and therefore aligns himself with Voldemort portraying the Order of the Phoenix so therefore he frames Sirius Black for a crime that he never committed and therefore Harry's having to save him from Azkaban, his godfather Sirius Black, and save him from that scandal that got committed. So therefore, he ends up doing that. And then in God Blood of Fire, he's having to face off against uh, Voldemort for the first time in, uh, in basically 12 years or something when Voldemort is reborn. Something along the lines of that. And... Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's what happens there. Actually, no, it, it might have not been 12 years ago, because I think Harry was 14 by, by the time that he stood up to, Vol to Voldemort. So, therefore, it would have been 13 years ago, because he was at the age of one when it happened. So, therefore, he stands up to Voldemort, and he also has Cedric Diggory beside him, but not very long, because then Cedric dies which then plays on Harry for the next movie, which was Order of the Phoenix. So therefore, yeah, moving the attention on to Order of the Phoenix, he, basically what happens in that is Harry struggling mentally and physically and emotionally due to everything that he had been through during the, those amount of years, and therefore he's having a tough time all the time mentally and everything and then in the end he snaps out of it by the end of the movie and he comes up against Voldemort before then once again which therefore he gets help from uh, one of his good friends Alvis Dumbledore Alvis Percival Brian Wolfrid Dumbledore which is his full name and uh, therefore he gets help from him and also on a side note, his bully at school was of course Draco Malfoy and also his father 
was Lucius Malfoy, Foy, Draco's that is, father was that, that was Lucius Malfoy, and he also had his uh, buddies Crab and Goyle, Malfoy did, so therefore they got in the bullying spree for, for much of uh, Harry's childhood, and then uh, in Half-Blood Prince, he basically has to cope with Dumbledore's death, which is uh, very, very hard for him mentally, and that's by the end of the film, and uh, and Slughorn ends up uh, being one of Harry's good friends during the film, and then by the end of that film, definitely how this part one rolled around, and that was where Harry had to retrieve some Horcrux Cruxes, and that, and this went on to part two as well of Deathly Hallows. He had to do it for that as well. So he was chasing down Horcruxes for the two movies, the last two movies, and based on that, he he ran into a bit of trouble where he got captured by Bellatrix along with his friends Hermione and Ron, and then. Uh, and it was all to do with the Gryffindor sword. And therefore, Hermione found herself in a very, very unwinnable situation with uh, Bellatrix in that movie. And Harry and Ron were basically sentenced to prison. Where Ollivanders and Luna Lovegood were also uh, held. Which is one of Harry's friends. Luna Lovegood, and then Ollivanders was the guy who gave Harry the first one that he ever put his hands on. So therefore, yeah, so that happens. And then what happened was, what happened? And then Dobby came to the rescue, who was a thorn in Harry Potter's side, but turns out all he wanted to do was just protect Harry Potter, and that, and that came at the expense of uh, his life. So therefore, Dobby died in the incident, which was very, very upsetting. That upset a lot of people. Like, people were genuinely sad about that. And then, Deathly Hallows Part 2 rolled around, and therefore, it got to the climactic battle at Hogwarts, where a load of people died like, uh... Like, uh... What's it? Remus Lutz? Lupin and uh, and Tonks, who were a couple at that point. Bellatrix, I think, cousin might have been Tonks. I'm not sure. And then, and then Remus Lupin had a deep relationship with James Potter and Sirius, who were obviously Harry's father and godfather in that order. So therefore, yeah. So he sadly died in the end. And then uh, Fred Weasley, I believe it was, also got got killed. One of Ron's older brothers. So that was sad. And then Snape, the guy who apparently loved Lily Potter, Harry's mother, more than anything, ended up dying. And he told all the all the secrets to Harry. And therefore, he was a good guy by the end of his life. And furthermore, all he was doing throughout his life when Harry came to Hogwarts was protecting him from whatever and whoever, you know, was around. Even though it may not have looked like it, that's what he was doing. And you saw little hints of that during all the movies building up to that. So like, for example, with Chamber... So like, for example, with uh, Philosopher's so Stone, when Professor Quirrell was jinxing the broom for Harry, Snape came to the rescue and was trying to unjinx it from uh, whatever mess Professor Quirrell put it in. And that was when Harry was doing Quidditch. So that happened. And then Harry went into the final door with Dold I mean, not Doldemort. <laughs> he went into the final duel with Doldemort. No. He went into the final duel with Voldemort and won. And therefore saved the entire Wizarding world and ended the second Wizarding War and in in the span of that got together with Ginny and so did Ron and Hermione they got together and therefore 
Harry, Ron had, I mean, Harry and Hermione had kids, and then Harry and Ginny had kids, and they sent all of them off to Hogwarts, and everybody lived, well, <laughs> happily ever after, pretty much. So, uh, yeah, guys, if you guys enjoyed this, uh, elongated story on, uh, the life of Harry James Potter, then <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, share these videos, if could go up to 40 likes, or 60 likes, should I actually say, then that would be great, and yeah, ciao guys.